Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Tuesday, September the 8th. I'm Eric Wilkinson. I hope everybody had a great long weekend, Labor Day here in the United States. So we had an extra day off. Uh, markets were still open overseas, like uh, the Chinese market and things of that nature, but the U.S. markets were closed. Uh, but you guys might recognize me from mainstream media where I've talked about the economic data, the geopolitical environment, how that comes in to impact the markets with my market analysis. I do the same thing in these daily market commentaries, but I'm gonna go a little bit further for you guys and drill down on some option strategies that I'm implementing into my portfolio based on those economic, geopolitical, and our directional assumptions from the market analysis. But check out the webinars because I really go into detail on each individual strategy, option strategy, and talk about some of the details that we need to have going on around these underlyings in order to implement any given strategy. Sorry, my uh, microphone's doing something funny there. Let me fix that for you. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. It looks like it's doing okay, but uh, there. Let's play around with that there a little bit. Um, sorry about that. So economic data across the pond, really not a whole lot going on here, but we did get the NFIB, which is Natural Federation of Independent Businesses. It's a small business index, and that's a good one. Why? You've heard me talk about the small business is really the driving force in the economy a lot of times because those guys are the ones that are going to be spending money in and around those communities where they are located. So that is going to be a big driving force of the economy. That number coming in better than uh, expected there at 100, expected to be 99. So the small businessmen, despite the fact that they've seen lockdowns and had to close some, shutter their doors for a little bit, uh, they're starting to see maybe this economy starting to come back, All right? So uh, that is good for the overall economy there. Um, then we got, uh, what else was there? The economic optimism, the tip up economic optimism. That one was a little bit worse than expected coming in at 45, expected to be 47. Um, all right, so overall market, seeing continued weakness here across the board in the equities, also here in crude oil. At the, uh, the run up we've had in equities, we're seeing some of this pullback here uh, across the board in most markets, maybe, uh, you know, the bonds are actually making a move higher, but we've got crude oil out of that 40 handle, which is good. We're gonna start seeing gas prices start to go down, which uh, will help us spend our money in other ways. We've talked about the velocity of money many times on these daily market commentaries. What is velocity of money? Well, it's when us as the consumer has a little bit of extra money that we can spend in different areas of the economy. So if we're not having to pay a lot more for gasoline in our cars, well, that extra $5 is probably gonna be spent somewhere else, whether you go and buy a coffee somewhere at a Starbucks, Dutch Bros, or something like that, you're going to spend your money, that little extra bit of money, somewhere else in the society rather than it being compartmentalized to uh, the gasoline tank, which is really uh, uh, detrimental, or it, it, I shouldn't say detrimental, but that will um, hurt the spending elsewhere, right? If I have to spend $50 for filling up my tank versus $30, well, that's a lot of money back in my pocket that I'm going to spend elsewhere. All right, gold futures moving higher by almost $10. You know, it is really showing support right around this 1923 uh, area, which was the all-time high we saw back in the um, Great Recession. So that, good to see that it's starting to show support. We're also seeing that 50-day moving average start to climb and uh, we'll soon line up with that same uh, metric there, the Fibonacci that we talked about, and will even duly act as a another thicker line in the sand to uh, act as a support level there. All right, bonds, uh, moving back up into the 176 handle. This is where I've talked about the market should probably want to migrate back to. We've gotten there. We haven't quite got above that Fibonacci there, uh, but I do expect us to slowly start migrating back to the point of control, which is where the most time and volume has been spent. That's the sweet spot. It's acting as a magnet, pulling this market back to that area. And why would we go there? Well, 
we've seen all of these Fed governors already talking. They aren't planning on raising interest rates anytime soon. Now, we were starting to see some pullback in the bonds because it does not look like another stimulus package is coming around. These um, uh, politicians are more concerned about getting reelected than getting money out there to the people. So it looks like that is a uh, uh, behind us at this point anyway. All right, so bonds up a point on the day. We can see where the equities are doing. They're all down by about a percent or better. Uh, you can see here the Dow Jones Industrial Average is off by 355 points. Off the lows, though, we did make an attempt right off the open of the uh, regular markets. The overnight was pretty weak. We tried to make a move uh, during the opening, but that has since started to fail. Uh, I've taken that opportunity on that rally uh, that... Uh, it just felt pretty heavy today, but I did take advantage of opportunities in and around the markets when we started getting that bump and starting to look like it's coming to fruition here now. As you can see with the uh, NASDAQ leading the way, FANG stocks doing uh, uh, having some difficulty as well, but you can see the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and we'll see the same in the E-mini S&Ps are off uh, and you know kind of near the lows of the day. Not quite the lows of the day, but you can see that is a pretty heavy candle. Uh, E-mini S&P is off 53 points and a po over a point and a half. But there you can see NASDAQ leading the way to the downside. Uh, I think that that is going to be something where we are, if we're going to get a more of a correction, we're going to see the NASDAQ probably uh, be the leader to the downside. Why? Because a lot of these people where we were talking about are going to be the weaker hands, the newer investor that was coming in, you know, double fisted on some of these trades. You know, we saw the stock split mania, like a run up, massive run up in Tesla and like um, uh, Apple ahead of their stock split, which is is a pretty bizarre uh, situation where they're increasing in value just based on the fact that they're going to have a cheaper stock. Well, when you're doing a stock split, it's just basically, you know, taking a pie and, and you know, you're getting a smaller slice of that same pie. All right. So it doesn't make sense to run up the price of that same pie. It's still a pie, right? You're getting a smaller portion, uh, but still the equivalent piece. Um, of the pie, just a smaller slice in a sense. Uh, the valuation or what it's worth is the same. Um, and we were seeing that run up and a lot of that has to do with those weaker hands. Some of the newer investors, the people that are coming in um, and you know getting involved in the stock market for the first time, well, when they start seeing their P&Ls start to go down, they're gonna be one of the first ones to flush out of some of those positions. Uh, and I think that that's what we're going to start seeing here where we're getting a bit of this correction. You know, Wall Street or the Main Street investor has been trying to take money off of the table here uh, as we've been rallying. And they've been basically taking money off the table and handing it over to some of these weaker hands. Now, those guys are going to be the ones to start folding uh, rather quickly. And with the algos as well, we could start seeing some exacerbated downside moves here. All right. So uh, here's what we're talking about with the overnight. You can see it was pretty weak. Made an attempt to rally right off the open. That was kind of your opportunity. Yeah, we're getting a bit of a bounce right now, but I don't think that we're going to see a uh, rally as strong as we did on, say, uh, Friday, where we got a nice big rally on Friday uh, towards that end of the day. Well, it's, it seems just very heavy today uh, in volume, and we're seeing some volatility spikes, which means... Um, we could see some more downside as people are adding protection to their portfolio by buying puts probably at this point. Um, but let's take a look at a couple of things that I've done. We are talking about BABA for the last couple of weeks, really, uh, where I did it on a short call spread, was looking to sell some calls uh, in this trade when we got the big sell off. I felt like on um, Friday, I didn't want to really try and chase that. Um, you know, in hindsight, I probably... Uh, would have done very well had I chased it or just left my trade in there. But I did cancel those orders on those rallies um, on Friday and waiting for a bit of a confirmation to the upside to see if I was going to do anything. Well, today we're seeing some more weakness here and more things about uh, uh, China versus the U.S. and, uh, you know, U.S. blocking some Chinese 
companies and stuff like that. So that I think is going to ultimately hurt Baba as well. So I went into the October. I didn't get my 345 calls. I had to go down to the 330 calls and was able to sell those for $2.86. Since I've done that, we have seen uh, more of a sell-off. I, like I said, did that earlier this morning, like uh, very close to the open of the markets, about an hour after the open, actually, uh, when we got that big rally, uh, was able to get some better strike location there uh, on Baba then, um, probably what we would see right now. Definitely not as good a strike location as I could have gotten on Friday, but I'm not too worried about that. I was happy and content with uh, not chasing that on Friday, so today decided to go ahead and there and put something on. All right, big move down to the downside here at Coca-Cola. If you guys remember, Coca-Cola I have on a long trade in here at 53, which is right there at around that point of control that we're uh, looking at right here in the uh, market profile. I have expected Coca-Cola to make it up there with the reopen trade, bars and restaurants starting to open. That's where a major uh, portion of their profits come from or their sales, I should say. Uh, so I've been expecting this as a reopen trade to do well, and it just hasn't really done a whole lot. So what I've done is just stayed, you know, consistent, stayed mechanical, lowering my overall cost basis on this uh, trade over time. And I've, I've been kind of eyeing up those 45 uh, puts in there to do some dollar cost average because I'm long at 53. But what I would do is be or uh, selling these 45 um, puts in there to try and do some dollar cost averaging. I've sold some 43 puts as well. But uh, here I went in and sold those 45 puts for, uh, went into the October, sold the 45 puts for 52 cents. Uh, long at 53, over this whole time, selling calls against it. Um, you know, like I said, I got long at 53. I had sold some uh, 30 puts when we got a big sell off there. Uh, was able to uh, cover those for, you know, 13 cents. So I lowered my cost basis by 60 cents, sold some 55 calls, some 50 calls uh, over time there. It looks like I basically lowered my overall cost basis by about $2 total. So my break even on the trade is at 51 uh, and now selling these 50, uh, or sorry, 45 puts at 52 cents, again, lowering my overall cost basis. So my break even is right around uh, 49.60 in total, right? If I lower my, uh, uh, sorry, uh, $51 uh, dollars or $50 dollars and 50 cents. So about a dollar higher is where my break even on this trade is at this point. Uh, so staying mechanical with Coca-Cola, lowering overall cost basis, that's what we do, right? I mean, if you have stocks in your portfolio, that is what we are trying to accomplish with that. I also tried to uh, get into Square. Uh, I wanted to sell some puts in here. I think Square obviously is here to stay now at this point, especially with the, um, the new paradigm in the, uh, the way that businesses are being run. I think that Square is gonna do well. Uh, it's becoming more and more of a staple with some of these smaller businesses. Therefore, I think they'll do well. They, they uh, knocked it out of the park for the pandemic and were able to really uh, service their customers. So I tried to get involved with Square by going in there and selling some puts as well. But as you can see, Square has rallied uh, off the 50-day moving average, came down there, tested it again today, but got a bit of a pop and I uh, still have a working order in there to sell some puts but I haven't gotten filled on that at this point in time. So it looks like it's probably a foregone conclusion that I'm not gonna get those. I was trying to sell the October 110 puts in there uh, to do some, uh, collect a nice credit, but obviously it's gotten away from me. It's about 50 cents away from me at this point uh, on my credit that I was trying to collect. All right, so uh, Square doing that. It looks like a lot of people like we talked about are Moving out of things like Tesla that we've said down another, uh, you know, 15% today, just really getting beat up. Uh, funny story, and I probably wish I would have talked about this earlier, but the, the sign was probably when my son came in and said his best friend was trying to talk everybody into buying Tesla because of SpaceX and everything else. And I was telling him, this is not the time to do it. Uh, 
anytime you have like your Uber driver giving you stock tips, or in this case, a 17 year old giving you stock tips, that's probably a high. <laughs> but uh, Tesla uh, getting beat up again today. Um, I wish I would have thrown that out there immediately as soon as I had heard it. But, uh, you know, some of the travel stocks or Las Vegas stands are doing well. My pin stock in my portfolio is doing well. It's up another couple of dollars. So uh, these types of trades are doing well. The gaming, um, travel, I think uh, if you looked at a lot of airline stocks, they were they were pushing to the upside um, on their stock. Oh, it's love, L-U-V. Um, for Southwest Airlines, you know, they're in positive territory. UAL, I think, was in positive territory at one point today. Um, so these types of stocks, the travel, the airlines um, are doing well. Something to note with GM, they are, uh, they bought a 11% stake in Nikolai. Uh, that is another um, company that uh, could possibly compete with uh, some of the other uh, electronic or electric vehicles. Now, one of their main platforms is hydrogen cell. Uh, they are also getting into the batteries, but they, they have a truck. It's called the Badger, which is a pretty sweet truck, if you ask me. Um, and they are going to produce that with GM at one of their plants. So that is a big deal for them. Um, uh, I'm trying to find the Badger here uh, truck. See if I can get a picture of it real quick. The Nikolai Badger truck, I think it is just sweet. Uh, one of my favorite trucks, I mean, even of electronic or electric vehicles or anything else, but this is the Badger that's going to be produced at the GM plant. Uh, very sweet, uh, beautiful styling. They, uh, they partnered with the Diesel Brothers, so if you watch... Um, Diesel Brothers on, uh, I think it's on the History Channel or something, or Velocity, but the Diesel Brothers design automobiles for uh, the consumer, like you could take a truck there, they'll build it out, kind of jack it up. Uh, well, they are uh, an integral part with Nikolai, uh, Nikola to produce this truck. They, they've also done a great job of reaching out to the consumer and saying, what do you like in a truck? Where, uh, how, how do you want this design to work out for you. So um, they've done a good job of reaching out to the consumer and come up with that truck. It's pretty sweet. Um, so GM making a blast off to the upside today based on that investment there and helping accelerate their uh, move into the alternative fuels for uh, different vehicles. All right, that's about it. Ran a little bit long because I got long-winded on the Nikolai trade there, but uh, that is a nice move for GM today. All right, take a moment to go over this disclaimer, please, as we are an educational company. I'm not trying to get you guys to limbing off the cliff with me. We're just here to talk about some of my trades, how we implement options into a portfolio in order to stay mechanical, lower overall cost basis in something like uh, Coca-Cola, where we've gotten in at a stock at maybe not the best level, and it's working against us at that point, well, we stay mechanical with it. It's not just pulling a ripcord on it every time. Sometimes we do need to do the, that and rip the Band-Aid off or out whatever phrase you want to come up with. But sometimes, you know, when you still believe in a stock, this is a great way when a stock isn't moving in your direction to lower overall cost basis and um, increase the yield in your portfolio. Options are the best way to do that. All right. So, uh, check out ProTraderStrategies.com. Sign up for our webinars. Also, follow us on Facebook. Give me a thumbs up on this video if you would. It helps us you know, get the word out to some other people. And one of the best forms of flattery in uh, the online world is to share this with your friends uh, and you know, give them some insight as well uh, so that they can start increasing their yield in their portfolios. All right. So that's all I got for you guys. Hope everybody had a great weekend and we'll see you tomorrow. If you can't take that, take it easy.